Hi, this is Linda Kame of Coeur d'Alene K9 in Westminster, Maryland, and thanks for joining us for Tate Week 3, Session 3. In this video, we start by working Tate's owner's handling for the auto sit at heel as an homage to my colleague and friend, Margot Woods of Applewoods Dog Training in Laurel. In the first few clips, you'll see Tate's owner move her right hand closer to the dog as she plants her left foot and helps him sit with her left hand. Her right hand passes the leash to her left. She regrips the leash with her right, much more closely to the clasp at the collar. She keeps steady pressure upwards without jerking the dog, and her left hand smoothly presses Tate's rump to the ground. Tate and Deb demonstrate this several times before we move on. Here, Tate's owner demonstrates the introduction to the stay command, signaling the dog to stay before moving to the front and to either side briefly at first before returning to the heel position. Introduce the principles of the four D's slowly so that there is no confusion from the dog. Also note, when training the stay command to lead the dog side using your right foot. Since all of our work at heel is paired with the left leg moving first and stopping first, this helps teach the dog to not move from this position held at the stay command. In previous lessons, Tate has learned to sit on command. Here we begin the introduction of the stay at sit using gentle leash pressure to keep Tate motionless as Deb slowly moves around him before returning to his right side at the heel position. It is important to start by allowing the dog to be successful at stay before returning to him, rewarding him, and releasing him. We begin incorporating the four D's of training, distraction, distance, duration, and degree of difficulty to help him understand the concept of not moving. I and my son Connor provide a moderate distraction for Tate's stay exercise to introduce another component of the four D's, distraction. Tate is very concerned with our motion and reacts when we move behind him. Deb's insistence that he maintain the same position, facing the same direction, and remaining until he is released helps Tate to overcome his fear of our activity. His lack of confidence will only improve by continuing to work him under increasingly distracting conditions. Tate's aversion to the ball and its movement is worked through with persistence. His reaction diminishes quickly once he realizes that no harm will come to him. Note that Tate's owner relaxes the leash as soon as Tate settles and demonstrates that he will stay. We will continue to work Tate on stay using the 4D principle to help build his confidence and reliability. This is Linda Kane. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, happy training.